Well, hello my friends. Alfred Taro here, the Rebel Turner. You know, it's been so long since I've been in the shop that I had to stop and ask for directions on how to get there. Anyway, the reason for this video is that I am constantly getting emails or texts from so many of you saying how you know asking uh, about my well-being if I'm okay seeing that I haven't recorded anything in quite some time and that is true some of the comments have been as far as without my inspiration that they're not inspired and that would be a real shame to be in a situation of that sort so anyway I'm gonna come in here and uh, aside of the mess that I got in here because the shop has been neglected for quite some time I'm going to see if I make a little bit of turning and make sure that you don't lose your inspiration so also filming this on a new old GoPro 6 um, which I just uh, purchased recently and it gives me the ability to film in 4k 60 frames per second so I'll be using the GoPro in some tight shots and so on um, which is what I'm recording right now and of course the majority of the recording will be done with my normal setup my two cameras this one over here records in a lower quality uh, 720 is the best I can do on that one but this one gives me 1080p so this is the majority of the camera that I use most of the time now oh, SD cards SD cards every once in a while I get a card that goes bad on me and I hate to say how many recordings I have actually lost I've actually lost quite a few recordings. Oops, sorry. lost quite a few recordings uh, or videos because these things have a tendency to just stop working they don't give you a warning you record with it you go to the computer and the computer reads it as a blank it needs to be formatted no matter what you do it, you can't even format it once it gets to that it just becomes trash and whatever footage you have is gone and that was the case with my last recording that I actually did so so I've actually been in here one time did not do anything uh, super but I was here and yet I don't have anything to show for it now part Now, part of the reason why I haven't been here in a little bit, in a little while, is because I'm somewhat uh, down. And I don't mean down with a, a depression disorder or anything that needs help, but depressed because I see my dreams of where I want to be become further away um, as you know I um, or some of you might know my house is up for sale I've sold some of my tools even though it depresses me to think that I'm selling my tools which is my not I don't make money on this but it's my fulfillment my enjoyment my hobby my passion this is what I would look forward to coming home every day would be to see if I could come out here and create something make something new uh, whether if it was a creation or not a creation 
I literally always enjoyed this. And I'm sure that I will enjoy today's session as well because I love wood. Now, it depresses me to see an empty spot back there where my table saw used to be. My edge of planer used to be right over there on that other side. I sold that. My MIG welder used to be back there, which I did not use, but I still had it. I, uh, I'm a, a tool whore. I cannot get rid of tools. Half of those DeWalt cordless drills that are over there, half of them don't even work, and I can't throw them away. <laughs> Never know, I might need the bearings from inside of it, uh, or, or the, the chuck, or... <laughs> I, that's how I am. But anyway, um, the shop is total chaos. It is a mess. I haven't been here in some time. It needs a good cleaning. The, uh, on the last time that I was actually here, uh, doing a turning. I had a mishap on the headstock on my lathe. Now there's always a way around it and you can always always make do. But my pulley on the outside pulley, my biggest pulley, broke. It had a weak spot for a long time and I didn't expect it to break, but it did. And uh, I was going to have it fabricated or welded professionally up. But, you know, the way I see it, you know, the, the lathe has a four-step pulley. One, two, three, four. And this is the one that gives me the best torque. So this was an important uh, pulley to have, of course. Uh, but it's gone. It's broken. So, um, it had been broken for a long time. I, the, the matter that the house has not sold is uh, putting a little damper on me. Because I was hoping the house would sell. And I could move into the catamaran, which is where I want to spend probably the rest of my life. And I don't know how that's gonna work. That's such a huge, huge change in life. At this point in somebody's life to make such a huge change, it's drastic. Well, I was going to be doing a little bit of wood turning, but uh, seeing that my pulley on my lathe has been broken for some time I decided to stop playing with it and I must say when you don't have the right material at hand go pick some up because this I must say started off pretty rough this piece was broken off in two pieces of course that came from here all the way up to here basically in half and uh, trying to put it back in its uh, position uh, was a little bit da uh, taunting uh, and harder than what I wanted. I had an old piece of two-part epoxy or uh, a squeeze tube type uh, thing that's used actually for embedding bolts into concrete. You bore out the, bolt, uh, the hole and it has this long uh, uh, wormy nozzle and you push a tool two part would push out at the right amount and mix it at the same time and it becomes uh, solid so I thought uh, but I don't have the gun and that takes a special gun so I kind of pre-mix some by hand I cut up the tube and took the two parts and mixed it up in a in a Dixie cup and started mixing it in. Well, it never dried up. It just became tacky. The fact that it was tacky helped me out in a way that it gave me a little bit of flexibility to be able to put these parts in place and it would somewhat hold it and not fall off. So, 
I wish I had not used it because it's not dry and now I kind of have to somewhat peel it off but what I did is I went to Home Depot just came back and picked up some JB Weld amazing stuff I've used this stuff now this pulley had been broken before for quite some time actually um, and of course it did not I uh, put it together with some uh, CA glue at the time and I had a two-part uh, doughy type epoxy on here to hold it together and it held up I don't know why all of a sudden it decided to let go but anyway with it in place somewhat lined up I'm going to mix up the JB Weld and I'm going to fill up this pulley completely and then go in here and shape it for what I need on the uh, for the belt and without taking it too far down so the belt actually rides on it and it doesn't apply pressure on the outsides of the pulley and this should hold up for some time for me cleaning up some of that crap that's on here so I can start off kind of fresh I need that epoxy to do a good grip but I don't want to be doing this too much while I don't have any grip on that so just cleaning it up and uh, start mixing up this stuff I could do it here or wider board I think either one of them works these things usually come sealed and the cap has a little pinpoint in there so you just reverse it and you puncture it And that's the easy way of doing this. Now these are the largest tubes that they had at Home Depot, believe it or not. Because one they used to have these much bigger than this. Now I brought three of these tubes thinking that's how much I will need to do this whole job When working with this stuff, do make sure you get a complete mix. What I'm going to do is put it in layers because I don't want this to start dripping down and this does not dry up instantly so I'll put it down and uh, rotate this
this liquid steel or JB Weld does work pretty well it's a strong product it grips well on aluminum so uh, it should do a, a good job at bringing the integrity of this pulley back to normal and like I said what I'm trying to do is uh, get it up fill up the, uh, the, uh, the void completely and it's starting to heat up which is a good sign No need to uh, go flat with it because either way the uh, intent is it down with my uh, small gouge or spindle gouge whatever that is
Okay, now the belt rides a little bit higher, which is still away from my edging over here. Still got plenty of room, and it's not applying pressure to the outsides of the, uh, the pulley. The way it was before, it was riding up on the top edge, and therefore it was uh, pushing out. And this, there's another advantage to this. The higher this pulley is, the slower of a speed I got, the better of a torque I got. So there's always an advantage to something, generally. Now, if you got a life center and it's been hanging around for a little while and you start getting uh, rust spots and stuff like this, this is what I do with about 120, 220 grit sandpaper and the power is good. Even if you want to remove the scratches, any scratches that you have on it, you can do it long enough to get them out. Then get away these uh, scratch marks that you have left on. This is 320. There you go. Life center is nice and clean. And I do that through my legs. Not enough to uh, take down any metal, but it does get a nice slip. Okay, seeing that I got this done, which was my, well, my goal was actually to turn something today. The goal, of course, is always to come out and turn something. But this has been broken for a little while and I was kind of getting a little, I don't know, uh, disappointed at the fact that I had something that was broken. And I can't stand have, uh, having things that don't function to the way they were designed. In this case, I mean, the lathe has had a lot of modifications that it was not designed for it. But, uh, but I need it to what I want it to be. And those modifications I've done all work really well. So I have no issues with those. So, seeing that it's uh, 1 30, I think I'm going to do a little turning. I have a log still from that Royal Point Sienna. Point Sienna at hand. 
and I'm going to do a droop over mushroom roll. You know me, I like those uh, rolls. So I'm going to mount it as I always do between centers and let's see how this comes out. Now there's uh, going to be a little bit of smolting on this. I'll keep this towards the top. So I'm going to screw this up, stop bringing it up this way, make a tendon over here, shape up the top pretty well to where I want, then flip it over and start on the mining. I might do some of this outside turning on the base and get it up to more or less the shape. But I have to rely, no matter what, on making a tenon here, making a tenon on the base, so I can flip it over and then at the end I can flip it over again and hollow this out. That will be the last step. Have a Reeves drive laid uh, which they're nice nothing wrong with it but you don't have that very low speed you have a 700 rpm speed so please stand out of the way when you turn your lathe on because at six seven hundred rpm that's pretty fast for a piece like this this is 420 rpm right now so time to go in there and start now also I don't know if this park being uh, sitting in here if it has separated any so I have to be careful of uh, this the possibility of this spark flying off. this spark I don't trust it I already see that I got separation between the spalting on a couple of spots so in this case I'm going to saturate the the bark with some thin CA now 